Thank you very much. The chair recognizes Mr. Gates for his five minutes. The Nonpartisan Government Accountability Office issues a report in June of 2016, firearms data. The ATF did not always comply with the Appropriations Act restriction and should better adhere to its policies. Uh, Mr. Wilcox, you're the witness the Democrats have invited here today. Are you familiar with that report? I am. And does the fact that the ATF broke the law concern you? Um, the report, I believe, supported ATF's action in cataloging records to stop crime. I'll read from it. It says, a technical defect allows ATF agents to access data, including purchaser data, beyond what ATF policy permits. Do you take any umbrage with that conclusion? ATF has been collecting out-of-business records pursuant to a law signed by Ronald Reagan, and President Trump digitized more records than any other president. I don't care who did it. I'm just worried about the impact on my citizens. And I would acknowledge there may be Republican presidents who didn't do enough in the 80s to protect our gun rights. But on this finding, the ATF had to delete 252 million records, didn't they? So this is a tool that's helped solve 50% of crime. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did they have to delete 252 million records? What I know about this tool is that it's Th a That's how I'm asking tool. you. Did they have to delete? You said you're aware of the report. Is that conclusion correct? They had to delete 252 million records. I'm not aware of that line, but what I'm aware okay. of is the tool. Well, I, I'll, I'll, tool. I'll represent to you that that's what had to happen. The fact that the government collected 252 million records that was beyond the law, beyond policy, never approved according not to me, not to my fellow Republicans, but to the GAO. Should that be concerning to us, that scope of records being collected? ATF's collection of out-of-business records was fully compliant with the law. That's the issue, not what the GAO said, so you disagree with the GAO report. Well, there's two points they made. One is the collection of out-of-business paper records that, that FFLs keep. The second piece was the collection of electronic records that FFLs keep. And what the GAO said was they, the electronic records were not being converted sufficiently. And that's right. what ATF so that's why they had to, to become them. in compliance they with illegally, the Because they had gone beyond their authority. You see, that's, that's the concern of my constituents. When they go beyond their authority, and you may find those things virtuous, but no one elected you. They elected us to make the laws. And when we make the laws and they don't follow them, then people's rights get diminished. Another area is this issue of the arm braces. Now, in Mr. Wilcox's testimony, he says that an arm brace makes a weapon more powerful. Mr. Bosco, you know a lot about arm braces, don't you? I do. Do arm braces make firearms more powerful? They do not. They do not. Does it concern you that the witness that the Democrats brought would, would make such a claim that is, is obviously disproven by any utilization of those arm braces? I hope that my testimony today can help everyone here understand that the brace does nothing to make the weapon any more dangerous than it already is. And so when you've got the ATF going beyond their authority, collecting 252 million records that they have to destroy, well, that can just be explained because they're doing their best. But when Americans get inadvertently converted to felons because the ATF has exceeded their authority, there is no such grace for them, is there, Ms. Ware? Uh, that would seem to be the case under the, the recent policy change to zero tolerance. Zero tolerance for our fellow Americans when they're trying to exercise their rights and protect their liberties, but all the tolerance in the world for a corrupt bureaucracy that is violating the law, exceeding their authority, and collecting records that they have no business collecting. Um, I would make this final observation. I had the great privilege to spend two years on the House Judiciary Committee with the gentlelady from Missouri, and while she and I disagree strongly on this issue, her beliefs are sincere, and they are strong, and they are powerful, particularly when she expresses them. And so when she says to people that she wants to defund the police, she means it. And when she says in this committee meeting that gun violence is a public health emergency, well, she means that too. And our fellow Americans know the impact of folks up here in Washington declaring everything and anything a public health emergency. It means you're more likely to be locked in your homes, deprived of your freedoms, less healthy, less safe, less secure, and less able to live a truly American life. So know this, when the left talks about this as a public health emergency, 
Get ready to see those enhanced authorities abused by the ATF. And Mr. Chairman, it is my sincere hope that, it's, that in the very near future, we will have those very folks from the ATF here. And I intend to be utilizing the new rules that we have in the House of Representatives to offer amendments to the Appropriations Act to zero out their salaries for breaking the law and abusing the liberties of our fellow Americans. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wilcox, did you or anyone in your organization communicate with the ATF or the Biden administration about these issues we are discussing today prior to the notice of proposed rulemaking? Uh, we submitted formal petitions for rulemaking through the appropriate channel, sir. Before the notice of proposed rulemaking? That's correct. So you, you were in communication with the Biden administration wanting to make these changes? We filed formal petition for rulemaking through the appropriate channels. Did you? Who did you talk to? I was a written submission, sir. Written, did, did you speak to anyone uh, personally? I didn't. Did anyone in your organization talk to anyone? Uh, I, I have to check, but I believe we submitted the written submission as a formal submission. People in your organization channels. may have talked to folks at the ATF prior to the notice of proposed rulemaking. Not that I'm aware. Did anyone in your organization talk to Mr. Dettelbach before the notice of proposed rulemaking? Uh, I don't believe Mr. Dettelbach had came been in nominated. After. Anyone, have anyone talked to Mr. Dettelbach about this personally? Uh, of course, we've been in communication with the ATF in this administration and in prior administrations. Talking to the, the director? You've talked to the director? Uh, I mean, we've, we work with ATF across administrations. Have you talked to the director? It's a simple question. Uh, yeah, I've communicated with the director. You've talked to Mr. Dettelbach? Of course. Yeah. And, um, well, I find that interesting. I, I just know, as we're speaking upstairs, the, the president of the National School Board Association is sitting for a transcribed interview because the same thing happened there. National School Board Association talked with the Biden White House, the Biden Justice Department, the Biden Department of Education, concocted this letter that set in motion this whole attack on parents showing up at school boards. And it looks to me like we have a similar operation going on here, where you guys worked with the ATF to, to change something that had been the law for 10 years to go after law-abiding Second Amendment Americans. Second Amendment uh, uh, supporting Americans. Mr. Bosco, uh, you invented uh, the stabilizing brace, is that right? That's correct. And you invented it for a Marine buddy, a friend of yours who served our country and was injured? That's correct. And you were told 10 years ago that the stabilizing brace does not convert a pistol into a short barreled rifle, is that right? That is correct. I got yeah. the letter right here from the ATF, November 26, 2012, right? And then seven weeks ago, 180 degree change, right? 180 degree change, just the opposite. They now say it is just the opposite of what they told you 10 years ago. That's Again, just to, I know others have talked about this, but I think it's so clear. 180 degree change. So in 10 years and two months, the rule was one way, and you developed a business based on the rule that they told you. Your government told you this was fine, and now they've changed it. That's correct. When did the bill pass that changed the law? There was no bill. No bill. That's the fundamental issue, right? No bill. Mr. Dettelbach, the new director, he never ran for Congress. I don't think he was ever, I don't remember a bill going through Mr. Nadler's committee last Congress that changed the law. I would have known because I'm on that committee, the Judiciary Committee, which has jurisdiction over this stuff. I would have known, I don't remember a bill passing the full Congress. I don't remember a bill in the Senate Judiciary Committee passing or going through the Senate. And I certainly don't remember a bill going to President Biden's desk that he signed in the legislation that changed the rule. But this could potentially impact millions of Americans, law-abiding, Second Amendment supporting Americans. Is that right, Mr. Bosco? That's absolutely correct. How many products have you sold, just your company alone, to Americans? How many stabilizing braces have you sold? Many millions. I can say that from 2020 to today, which are the, day, the, the years that the ATF didn't concern itself with when it did its impact study, we sold our company alone 2.3 million braces. So while they were doing their study, they didn't count the number of braces that were being sold? They, they, they didn't count in their impact study. That's probably because Mr. Wilcox's organization told them not to count it, right? I don't want to. Well, they were talking to him all the time, it yeah. sounds like, putting this all together, going after people who support the Second Amendment. How many Americans do you think it's total? So I've heard estimates as many as 40 million Americans could be impacted by this? Correct. Correct. Congressional Research Services has said anywhere between 10 and 40 million Americans own stabilizing brace. Unless you remove the brace, lengthen the barrel, turn in or destroy your firearm or register your gun with this government that you know you can trust because Mr. Wilcox has been working with them, you know you can trust. Unless you do those four things, what happens? What are you? A felon. A felon. A felon for something 10 years ago they said was just fine. That you build a business on and the business started because you wanted to help a man who put 
the uniform of his country on his back and served our country and was injured, and now they're going to put you out of business and make people felons. But don't worry, every town USA, this, Mr. Wilcox has been working with our government to implement this to target Second Amendment people, Americans who support the Second Amendment. Such a deal. Such a deal. That's why we need legislation to say this rule does, we need to pass that. That's what we do need to pass into law now based on what has happened with this organization. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Tình nồng thắm xuyên qua bao mái tranh Ngọt ngào dâng hương hương mái tóc xanh Những tình mặn mà là những tình đơn sơ Quê tôi vẫn đẹp đẹp những tình ngây thơ Chiều làng quê say xưa trong tiếng ca Người làng quê yêu bông lúa thiết tha Những mẹ ra ngồi trông trẻ đùa xóm dưới Dung dung môi cười như thua còn đôi mưa Anh ơi khoan hò khoan Trên sông con đỏ ngang Khoan ơi khoan hò em về chăm lo Việc nhà thóc lúa vun vườn cả liếp dưa Anh ơi khoan hò khoan Lúa chín tô mồ hôi Khoan ơi khoan hò Tới mùa đơm bông Khơi ngàn lối sông Gặt nhanh ta gánh về Chiều tàn rơi trên đê nghe tiếng ai Hẹn hò nhau vui duyên thăm gái trai Tiếng hò chơi vơi khi trăng ngà lá lơi Đêm khuya rộn ràng bao tiếng chảy buông lơi Hàng dừa cao in mơ soi bóng sông Mộng ngày mai say xưa những ước mong Gái miền sông hương hẹn trái miền cứu lông Hai ta ước thề xây thăm tình xuyên quê về chăm lo việc nhà thóc lúa vun vườn cả liếp dưa anh ơi khoan hò khoan lúa chín tô mồ hôi khoan ơi khoan hò tới mùa đơm bông khơi ngàn lối sông gặt nhanh ta gánh về chiều tàn rơi trên đê nghe tiếng Hẹn hò nhau vui duyên thăm gái trai Tiếng hò chơi vơi khi trăng ngà lá lơi Đêm khuya rộn ràng bao tiếng chảy buông lơi Hàng dừa cao in mơ soi bóng sông Mộng ngày mai say xưa những ước mong Gái miền sông hương hẹn trái miền cứu lông Hai ta ước thề xây thăm tình xuyên quê Gái miền sông hương hẹn trái miền cứu long hai ta ước thề xây thăm tình duyên quê.